Hello everyone. Well, another unusually shaped package has been delivered. I wonder what it could be. It's wider at the end than it is at the top. Wow, what, what is this thing? Well, cut the pretense, you know it's a vacuum and you know it's an Electrolux twin turbo. So, without any further ado, let's get it open. Mm, let's try and be clever about this. I'll see if I can remove this box from that one. I wonder if it's going to be this easy. I doubt it very much, but you never know. Oh, blimey, I'm exhausted. I'll just pause to save you the pain of watching this. Ah, oh, well, <laughs> it's certainly well packed. Right then, let's hope that uh, all this packaging has protected this vacuum. We don't want any tears before bedtime and find there's bits broken off it. I'm all for safe sucks, but this takes the biscuit. Finally released from its cling film prison, I present to you the Electrolux Turbo 2 Super. I think I mistakenly called this a twin turbo. It was probably called a twin turbo in one incarnation or another. I think I've got the electronic version of this. I'm not sure if that's called Turbo 2 or twin turbo. Anyway, it's all turbo to me. So here we have it. I've given it a bit of a wipe, a bit of a polish, but it, it's in pretty good shape, although not so sure about the handle. I don't know if I'm going to find something broken. It's a little bit wonky, and I don't remember any other Electrolux 500 series I've got doing that. But, oh well, we'll have a look. This will probably need a proper servicing and a quick look at the underside reveals it definitely needs a new belt. This Electrolux Turbo 2 would have been at the lower end at the time it was in the shop. So I believe the Contour was launched when this was on sale, possibly the Airstream um, and other machines that were just a bit more modern. This is based, of course, on the 500 series that was introduced sometime in the late 70s, the first Electrolux 500. So it shares a lot of similar components. But of course, as the years have gone by, it's been cheapened, although features have been added, some taken away and uh, a bit of jiggery pokery going on underneath and in various areas to make this machine more cost effective to produce. It's got bigger wheels, which I think are an improvement on the traditional 500 series machines. For example, on my 502, 504, 506, you don't really see the rear wheels because they're much smaller and they're sort of hiding underneath the chassis. So the ent entire back part, including the wheels and the pedal has been redesigned. So it's a bigger pedal. And when you press down on it, the wheels move as well. I can show you, look. So it's a completely separate assembly. And we've also got uh, additional height control. So with the pedal in this position, it's suitable for longer pile carpeting. And this position for general low to medium pile carpet. But you can put it midway, a sort of medium pile carpet. But there's no indication, it just shows you really short pile, possibly hard floors as well, that symbol could mean. And 
longer pile carpeting. The Queen was still alive when this British made vacuum cleaner was in the shops and of course she would have done her own vacuuming because this is by appointment to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, suppliers of suction cleaners and floor polishers, Electrolux Limited Luton Beds. About two thirds of the way up on the front of the bag housing we've got a piston type bag check indicator that should fluctuate in use. I'll have to see if that still works when I turn the cleaner on. And here at the top we've got the clip that releases the whole top of this bag housing including the handle so we have access to the reusable paper bag. In another effort to cut production costs we now have the on off switch on top of the bag housing instead of the thumb operated switch we had on earlier versions so we've just got simple on off. At the back of the cleaner we've got the upper cord hook which should rotate, yes it does, to release the cable in one go. And here we have the lower cord hook that also acts as a carry handle. At the back of the cleaner we have the exhaust outlet with quite a lot of carbon dust on it so maybe the motor isn't going to sound as good as the cleaner looks on the outside but I'll be trying it in a moment in the video obviously. And just at the bottom we've got the tool port cover. There's no suction control on this that we'd expect on certain models. It's just a cover and it might spit out a bit of dirt when I open it. Oh, not too bad. And this is where you'd plug in the optional toolkit. Just plugs in, twists and locks into position. A really neat design and it enabled you to move the machine when it was in the upright position. So when the hose was attached, the machine would pull along behind the hose to follow you during your housework. To access the dust bag, we need to release this clip, which is now made of plastic instead of metal as on the earlier versions. And then the whole handle pivots backwards so you can pull out the dust bag for emptying or replacing. Now it's missing or perhaps it never was there in the first place. I'm assuming it's missing the sponge donut that normally sits here. They often perished and that helps provide a seal between the bag inlet here and the top of the bag but it's not here. It's not too drastic that it's not here. I do have a spare one. I assume it would have had one. I can't see Electrolux not providing that but you never know. This was a budget cleaner at this time. They might have done away with that. So we can pivot the handle back as I say and we can lift out the bag and this one is possibly genuine. Some of the later bags didn't have any printing on but it's non-reusable. Gone are the days of having a little clip you can slide off so you can reuse the bag. But I can put reusable bags in this because I do have a few of the spare red clips that would have been on previous versions. I'm getting a smell of air freshener and not a very nice one but mm, it could be a genuine air freshener. We can see inside looks pretty clean. It looks pretty clean and we can see a pretty clean looking filter. Let's pull that out. Again, I'm not sure if that's genuine, but it does have the pocket. Ah, oh, and it does, it does have an air freshener. I thought there was one. Oof, that's very strong. Oh, it's one of those cheaper ones you can buy from, you know, Home Bargains and what's that other cheap shop? B&M, that sort of cheapo packet of two disc air fresheners. The original Electrolux ones were made of plastic and were a grid design, so they didn't block off any suction that's a solid piece of whatever it is going in there so it it will possibly disrupt the airflow ever so slightly it's not going to make a huge difference I'm going to take that out actually because I'm not keen on that smell we should have yes we do another filter at the bottom can you just about see it and you have to access that using a screwdriver again these filters they haven't changed much it's the same filter that would fit the 500 series, the very first type upright Electrolux of this sort of style. So yeah, it's a bit of dust in there, but nothing I'm going to complain about. So I'll just pop that filter back. 
They've moved the seal for some reason. There's still a little seal here. The previous versions would have had a seal around this part, but instead the seal is built into the top of this one. So whatever reason Electrolux had, it might have been cheaper to make like this or quicker to produce. Instead of having the seal around the top of the bag housing, it's now on the lid. We can pop the bag back in. At least they've sent me a new bag and I haven't been sent a load of dirt with the vacuum as often I am. So there we go, the bag's in place. We can close the top of the bag housing and the handle and then lock into place using the plastic clip. Okay, finally, before I switch on, let's have a look at the underside of this Electrolux Turbo 2. Pretty similar to the other Electrolux 500 series machines I've shown on the channel, but you can see where Electrolux have cut corners to reduce costs. So instead of having a little metal strip around the base plate here, it's now all plastic. The brush roll looks very much the same. In fact, I expect it takes the same brushes as the previous Electrolux machines, but as I move that, it definitely needs a new belt. I'm not at home, I don't have all my spares with me, but I did bring a belt that might be suitable because definitely, as soon as I use that, that will stall. It, it's not going to rotate. Really could do with a new set of brushes. So I'm gonna change the belt now, but looking at the wheels, there's very little wear on them. They're not pitted, they're not marked, there's no gouges on them, which suggests to me that this cleaner has had light use. Even the bigger rear wheels are in pretty good shape as well. You can see where they've changed the whole assembly at the back from the previous version. But the base plate looks more or less identical really, apart from the metal strips. And I assume it's the same screws yeah it's a phillips screw i need i believe it. i only have to undo two screws to access the belt i'm wondering if the screws screw directly into the plastic housing or electrolux are still using the metal inserts no they're still yeah that's good they're still using the metal inserts it looks pretty clean and tidy there's no sign of a blockage but yes, that belt has definitely seen better days. So we're going to lift out the brush roll. And I will, I think I will change it. Well, I will change the brushes when I get home. As I say, I'm not at home, so I don't have any here. But yes, that definitely needs replacing. And we'll slip the belt off, which should be fairly easy as it's so loose. Always a little bit tricky, that came off really easily. So, let me see if I can find the belt I brought with me. It was just a random belt I found. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I don't think that's going to, I don't think that's going to be suitable. It's, I don't know what the belt's for actually. I mean, it's a, it's a, well, it's almost the same size, but it's, I really want it to be a little bit tighter. I'll put it on, we'll have a, we'll have a go. So I just have to thread it behind the drive shaft. Always a little bit tricky. Sometimes a flathead screwdriver helps. No, I don't think that's gonna help, I'm afraid. Mm. Let me just locate the brush roll. It's too easy, it's too easy to do. If it's too easy to put the brush roll back, that's, it means no, as you can see, that's, that's probably even worse. So that isn't the correct belt. So I'll have to, I'll put the old one back in. I've got, I've got lots of belts that fit this. I've got new filters, new brushes. Uh, I think I've got a couple of these internal hoses. If that was split, I, I could replace it. Right. Is that the belt of just, yeah, that, that's the belt. So it's not going to have a very good action. I might pop into town this week so I can finish the video here and see if I know an electrical shop that might possibly have a belt. I mean, I can't, I don't think if I order one online, I'll get it in time before I go home. 
I do have another Electrolux 500 series upstairs in the attic. So perhaps, folks, oh, I can't, can't get the belt on. It's very awkward doing it in this position. Normally I'd be facing it so I could see what I was doing. But because I'm trying to show you, I can't see what I'm up to. There we go, I've got it on. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I think I've got an Electrolux 550 here and I might have put a new belt in that. So, um, yeah. This only goes in a certain way. Just into the ends. There's a little cutout. Oops, oh, that's not on, is it? There we go. Yeah, that's not going to perform well, folks, with that lacklustre belt. I probably will be able to stop the brush roll with my hand with that worn belt. So that's going to affect the performance. But we're going to turn on now. And as long as the motor sounds OK, we should be laughing because it's if the motor's fine, it's just a cosmetic clean up. A few new easy to replace parts and I'll have this Electrolux Turbo 2 running smoothly and picking up the dirt. Make sure they're both nice and secure. Okie dokie. Let's switch on and pray that this machine works and it sounds okay. <laughs> no, it's another one. Another one of those vacuums that's been polished up to look quite good but inside she's rough and I thought she might be judging by all the black carbon dust that I wiped off around the motor when I, I gave this a bit of a wipe there was an awful lot apart from black carbon dust on the back where it exhausts there was quite a lot round at the bottom well I'll give it a push anyway you're rough you see this is what the sellers tried to do they've shoved an air freshener in and a new bag and it wiped it over and that's why I bought it because it from the pictures it looked pretty good but clearly this has had a harder life than I expected judging by the outer condition let's uh, see what the suction's like if I just remove the port at the bottom No, there's, that's less suction than it should have. I'm not sure what is the wattage. We haven't checked. I'm going to unplug because I don't feel very confident about that vacuum. We haven't looked at the rating plate. I don't know if this has got a higher wattage motor than the earlier incarnations. This Electrolux is made in Britain. It's model Z1070A, product number 904482. Serial number 527-00686, 240 volts, 50 hertz, and it's 550 watts. With the handle reclined, I've just noticed a split in the internal hose, which I'm not bothered about. I do have some replacements. There's also a hole here, which it looks like it's supposed to be there. It's a machine formed hole by the looks of it. I'm not sure if that should be bunged up or what. I'm not really sure. But I noticed some little bits of black fluff were coming out of that or I just picked something out of it. So that's coming from the motor. I'm going to just open it up and we'll have a look at the motor. It clearly needs, you can't do much with Electrolux motors. 
they do split apart. If this is the same motor, and I believe it is, as my Electrolux 610, which sounded awful, very similar to this actually, I did take that motor apart, cleaned it up as much as I could, and lubricated the bearings, put it all back together, and it sounded so much better. So I think I should be able to do that with this Electrolux Turbo 2. But we'll, we'll flip it over, and again, I'm not too, mm, not too sure about the wobble. So, with the machine definitely unplugged, we're going to have to get the old screwdriver and take some parts off. So without my tools, I'm having to use my mum's poultry set of screwdrivers. I'm going to remove the back wheels and these springs. That's not going to come off. Oh, they've put a they've put a stopper on that now. So I think I'll have to remove these brackets entirely. Bit of fluff coming out there. Yep. So again, I've been sold a lemon. Another machine that on the surface looked fine, but wasn't. It's very dishonest when people do that. If this machine had been completely messed up and filthy, I would, I would accept that the motor would possibly not sound too good. But when it's been dolled up to look good and smelling nice with an air freshener, and you find it isn't good, then I'm not too happy about that. But, you know, <laughs> ah, mm, somebody's been in here, folks. That's loose. I mean, they haven't even bothered doing the screws up. What do I... I don't know what to do. I just accept it, leave negative feedback, possibly... Oh, there's a... Hang on, where's that screw from? I think that... Oh, no, it's okay. I thought I had a screw loose, folks. Well, I do. All these... All, this, all the motor hook... No wonder there's hardly any suction. Because the motor casing is not screwed down properly for some reason yet yeah, every screw has not been tightened up they do deserve negative feedback for this but then you have to think well perhaps perhaps they didn't know you know you've got to give people the benefit of the doubt hmm but in this case, I'm not so sure. So there's clearly someone has been in here before. Is this going to... Yeah, there we are. Hang on. Oh, yucky, yucky. There's a little spring here. Needs removing. If I can... There we go. That's it. It stinks. All right, let's put that to one side. These are pretty worn, these little felt rings, which again, I've got a spare set of, which will improve matters. Quite easy to get into these. And slip the belt off now. We've got a seal. That can slip off. Pull this bit up. Take that bit out. And now we can, yeah, move the bag housing away, revealing quite a fluffy motor there. Yeah, it's absolutely caked in fluff. Wow. Just lifts out now. I don't really want to put it down on the carpet. Hang on, let's get a piece of that um, bubble wrap. They made sure that this machine turned up without being broken, but clearly it does need work. Now, what am I doing? I don't want to do that. I want to move that away. So, as you can see, we just need to, we've got fluff here, fluff here, fluff everywhere. I'll just get uh, 
my mum's SIBO Felix and suck all that out. I mean, it all needs properly cleaning, but not today. And again, that hose is pretty easy to replace. Just two screws here. And uh, we can lift out this hose and replace it with a nice new one. Yeah. Here's oh, it does have a funny smell. It's top bearing there. And then this will... Oh, it's full. It's absolutely packed with fluff. I've never seen anything like it. It's packed. That would soon start to overheat. Just removing that fluff is, is going to help. But this will come apart. It looks quite similar to a 610 motor. Maybe even simpler. Hoping it's just a case of undoing two screws. Let's have a quick look while we're at it, folks. By removing these, hoping we can clean out all this fluff. I'm not sure if it's going to be that easy, though. I'm probably going to regret doing this. Oh, they are, they're long screws. Is that just going to, I don't think it's going to be that easy, is it? Oh, it might be, I don't know. Oh, something's, yep. Yeah. Oh, it is that easy. Oh, right, blimey. Look at that, all that fluff, that's a fire risk. And here we see the carbon brushes. How on earth did that happen? So this has clearly had a lot more use and it's been polished up you can't polish a something beginning with t i can't say what it is on this channel i hope i'm not sure if i can but i'll have a look to see if i can get a set of new carbon brushes for this because i think it needs them but oh look at all this wow look at that how how does it how does all this fluff accumulate i mean it's absolutely ridiculous. All right, let's carefully vacuum away what I can. Yeah, you can hear, can you hear? Sounds dry. But removing all this fluff, I don't really want to go too further. I don't know how much further in I can go. I don't think I can go much further than this, to be honest. But I can get all the fluff off. I can't do it here, I don't have the right stuff. But I can spray, I've got some spray grease it's not uh, not WD-40 it I think it might be made by WD-40 but it's a spray grease that's the only thing you can really do with these just spray as much as you can once it's all cleaned up down here load of grease down there and this top bearing again a load of grease put it back together and this should improve dramatically and also of course all this fluff Taking all this out is going to improve matters. It'll, I mean, it'll keep the motor cooler because with all that fluff around it, it wouldn't have taken too long for this motor to get too hot. There's hairs in here as well. Wow. I really was not expecting to find this mess when I initially opened this machine. So 
so yeah now uh, what's what's that doing I mean the the commutator well, to my eyes it looks okay I mean it, it's not really bad at all it's just these bearings are so mucky and dry but I think the next time you see this at some point I will have greased all this up it's possibly going to need new carbon brushes because they're very short I don't hopefully I can get carbon brushes for this not sure they are very very worn oh, that, oh look at all that fluff oh it's quite satisfying though isn't it to clean out something so I'm just going to clean all this up reassemble put it back together properly even when I turn it on again after putting it back together it might sound a little bit better and when everything's screwed down properly we might get a bit more suction but clearly this does need quite a bit of work even little bits of tinsel I've, I've seen so this is obviously cleaned up after the Christmas festivities whatever year that was a little toothbrush would help here or even a dusting brush on a vacuum but I don't have one for this SIBO not here with me I've got all my tools and cleaning equipment and oils and grease and everything at home but not here so I'm just saying, just getting the worst off until I can get home. And at some point, not for a while though, but at some point, this is going to have a lot more TLC. Ooh, oh, that was satisfying getting rid of that now. <laughs> getting it back how it was. Was it this? Was it that way? I'm not sure. Should have taken note of that, shouldn't I? Ah, oh, right, does it? Ah, mm. oh, I think it was like that. Sounds a little bit better even now, even before any lubrication is added. I think that was right. Mm. <laughs> it's how do I get that on? I might have to. Mm. I might have to release very carefully if I can I'm not sure I don't know to snap off oh, I'm, getting, I'm getting filthy well you can't not get dirty when you're dealing with a vacuum cleaner motor pretty sure that's pretty sure that's the way on it goes because there's these spring is here that obviously need a good clean that do connect I believe it's quite clever how it works there's no wire connecting the carbon brushes it's done on this spring so I'm thinking it does go in this way but there will be a knack these brushes might just pop out but they are very very worn by the looks of them all oh, this well then ah actually no they're probably not so worn actually hmm look they just yeah look they're not worn I don't think I need to replace them look they just need to come out all this cleaned well they're, just, they're a lot better now just doing that but I just need to work out how it's supposed to go on with the brushes sticking out like that I don't really want to break the ends off um, hmm. not sure what to do folks but what I think I will do is pause the video and have a little bit of a think well I'm afraid that's the last we're going to see of the Electrolux Turbo 2 Super for now I've put it all back together but I'm not going to switch it on again because the carbon brushes aren't engaged with the armature I need to strip it down properly when I get home with all the proper tools all the proper lubrication 
and spend some time, a few hours, on getting this machine working again. And I'm sure the next time you see it in action, it will sound a lot better. Have a new belt fitted and new brushes, greased and oiled where appropriate, and uh, tea cutted and polished. So it should look even better than it does. On the surface, it looked like it was a good machine. But obviously, as soon as I turned it on and opened up that motor, we could see you can't polish a bleep. So um, I'm not going to polish this bleep. Not until I've sorted out the horrors that lie beneath, but it won't, you know, it'll be a fiddly job. It'll take me a while to do properly, but it's not really going to be a difficult job to get this Turbo 2 running smoothly again. So until the next video, thanks for watching and I'll see you all very soon. Bye for now.